So thank you. Um, and uh, I guess that uh, the NIMAL uh, should have considered, particularly having so many um, or, or a significant presence of Mediterranean people in the group, the, the siesta consideration. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we do not have that very sexy video that, uh, that SDIL has prepared. We'll, we'll try to do our best. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll talk about NIMAL, uh, Nutritional Immunology and uh, Molecular Medicine Laboratory. I'll also talk uh, a little bit since it's uh, so essential to NIMAL uh, about uh, the Center for Modeling Immunity to Enteric Pathogens. Uh, but both uh, efforts are um, leading towards a common goal, uh, which is applicable to these and, and other projects that have matured and, and left BVI and left Virginia Tech but are still ongoing, and is to develop safer cures for human diseases. So our focus is not to develop tools, it's not, uh, we are not, and I'll start by saying that, we are not a mathematics laboratory, we are not a computer science laboratory, uh, we are not an immunology laboratory, we are a laboratory that is intended to solve problems. However, in order to be able to solve those problems related to human health effectively and efficiently, we use tools in computer science, uh, through internal expertise or through collaborations uh, with other groups at BVI, such as NDSSL, um, to advance new products into the market or to understand mechanisms of action uh, that will eventually help advance those products uh, into the market. So we, in order to accomplish that, we have a diverse expertise within the group, and, and I'll talk briefly about the, the senior people within the team, and they'll, uh, they'll participate in the question and answer session. Uh, we have uh, Raquel Fontecillas, uh, who is an, an immunologist with expertise in mucosal immunology. She leads the um, immunology efforts within the Center for Modeling Immunity to Enteric Pathogens. Um, Stefan Hoops uh, leads the bioinformatics and software development efforts uh, under MIP. And uh, there's a new addition in the team, uh, Vida Vedi, who is, uh, has expertise in computer engineering and also uh, molecular medicine. So she brings together both areas uh, that we are pursuing within NIMAL to advance modeling immunity to enteric pathogens as, as well as other projects that ultimately will help understand and develop ways to improve human health. Uh, the, the NIMAL is therefore a multi-PI group using transdisciplinary approaches to advance uh, human health and develop uh, new therapies. Our approaches consist on, and uh, they are very similar to the approaches that have been presented earlier in the day. Uh, in this case, I'm defining this slide as a systems immunology approach, by which we start uh, approaching a problem by a thorough analysis of what is known about the problem. We like to reflect on the past and build our questions on that past we articulate those uh, questions, both theory and data, around uh, computational and mathematical models. Uh, we run simulations, and we utilize those simulations then to guide uh, the experimentation. And actually, the most important piece, in my opinion, is the validation of those computational predictions, which luckily, since our subjects are mice, pigs, and eventually humans, we have the opportunity to validate those uh, predictions. In order to um, work on this abductive cycle, uh, we are using um, tools such as Complex Pathway Simulator, other tools developed um, uh, in NIMAL and in collaboration with NDSSL, such as Enteric Immunity uh, Simulator. And those tools allow us to examine problems related to human health at uh, several scales of spatiotemporal magnitude. Silky this morning presented a very narrow scale uh, of one cell and the problem of cell division and, and cell proliferation. And she alluded to the fact that the human body actually has about uh, 30 trillion cells. We do not pretend to model the entire human body, but we pretend, and in fact, we 
do, model the parts of the human body that are relevant to understand human disease and advance the development of novel therapeutics for that human disease. So at the bottom layer, we have the tissue level. In our case, we work a lot with intestine in the context of infectious disease and immune-mediated disease. The cell-cell interaction layer, uh, the cytokine, chemokine level layer, and then the intracellular layer. And the intracellular layer drives the decision of the cells to uh, become pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory and therefore drive key decisions that will result in lesion development or resolution of infection. And we have added recently, uh, with the expertise of uh, a new member of the team, a top layer, which is a, an automated uh, means of extracting knowledge for, from existing literature through latent semantic analysis and ontology mapping that will allow us to uh, accelerate the building of those initial networks that will be the basis for the theory and the data of, of those models. Some figures uh, uh, and data, some food for thought, uh, we have accounting uh, students and other personnel, about uh, 40 members in the lab. Uh, over the years, we've generated about uh, $12 million in funding. Uh, we have over 100 publications, 20 patents. Uh, our website uh, seems to be quite visited. About 55K uh, people have been visiting our website over the last few years. We generate a tremendous amount of data. A lot of this is from animal models. Uh, my speaks, some of it is uh, from humans. In collaboration with NDSSL, we are simulating models that scale up to 10 to the 8. Um, we've utilized over 50,000 mice over the course of the years here at Virginia Tech, about several hundred pigs. Have uh, trained and mentored about 150 undergraduate students. And last year, we hosted uh, a workshop in computational immunology for the modeling immunity for biodefense program that had about 70 participants. Uh, Stefan was reminding me earlier today that COPASI is being downloaded about 10,000 times a year. So the tool is uh, highly utilized. Some of the aspects of the research going on uh, within nutritional immunology and molecular medicine are uh, presented in our website, and some of them have been uh, very active uh, in uh, previous years and are not as active now, uh, but continue to uh, be meaningful in terms of application. The two current areas that are most active are infectious diseases and computational immunology, because those are the two areas that are um, supported under modeling immunity to enteric pathogens. But in the past, we've done significant progress in chronic diseases, particularly obesity and type 2 diabetes, where we've developed products that are now advancing towards the commercialization pipeline. And of course, the start of the lab was in nutritional immunology. I'll talk about that later in a more uh, specific slide. But we started NIMAL in 2002, studying how uh, nutritional interventions modulate the immune response. Particularly, we wanted to understand how uh, lipid molecules would modulate the balance between inflammation or inflammatory responses in the gut and anti-inflammatory responses. We've learned that some of those naturally occurring compounds can be modified and be made more potent. And we've utilized that information then to advance a pipeline of uh, new therapeutics that are applicable to both um, chronic inflammatory diseases such as diabetes as well as uh, immune-mediated diseases such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, this is one, an example of some of the approaches we've utilized uh, through molecular modeling on uh, some of the targets of interest in the lab. Uh, Lanthionine synthetase like 2 is one of the recent targets. Uh, previously, we did a significant amount of work on peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma. And more recently, we are interested in not, not like receptor X1. What's common in these two molecules is that when they are hit with the right um, naturally occurring substance or the right drug, we are eliciting an anti-inflammatory response. And that is relevant to infectious disease, uh, to maintain uh, tissue health, for instance, during the uh, infection with H. pylori or Clostridium difficile, and that's even more important in the context of immune-mediated diseases. 
um, the nutritional immunology area is the area we started with. Uh, we uh, started to investigate nutritional immunology in combination with mucosal immunology, which is one of the recurrent themes under modeling immunity to enteric pathogens. We did not start mucosal immunology efforts in an infectious disease setting. We started those efforts in a, uh, an autoimmune disease setting. But uh, what's important is that the gut is a very sophisticated organ that uh, needs to be designed and have the, the right characteristics to allow nutrients to come in, be absorbed, be digested without eliciting immune responses. And at the same time, uh, it needs to have the protective actions to prevent pathogens uh, to uh, infect that mucosa. And so understanding how the immune system in the gut operates, understanding those mechanisms allows us to uh, either maintain health in some cases or prevent infectious disease, or in some cases live with infectious disease. And I uh, hope that later on under the question and answer session, we'll have an opportunity to discuss some of the examples of pathogens that may be viewed in some occasions, and that's a theme that, that has um, uh, has been brought up earlier in previous discussions, certain organisms that can be pathogens or can be commensals. In other words, in some cases, they, they can exert uh, detrimental effects versus positive effects. And one of such organisms is Helicobacter pylori. Uh, in the context of immune-mediated diseases, our efforts have been very applied, and the rationale for uh, having very applied efforts is this pipeline, this arrow, shows us the failure of treating immune-mediated disease in the US and worldwide. Uh, current therapies against inflammatory bowel disease are uh, not very efficacious and have significant side effects. This is the, the line of attack that MDs utilize to deal with an autoimmune disease uh, without a cure, Crohn's disease. And the most efficacious therapy is biologics. Um, Biologics cost about uh, 20K per year for that patient affected by uh, Crohn's disease, and it, they work in an amazing uh, rate of 30%. So it's 20K investment, 30% return. I think that that brings a good point that there's a need for safer and more effective therapies, and, and we've utilized some of the targets that we've identified and studied and can manipulate pharmacologically and nutritionally in order to be able to develop those uh, better therapies, uh, either nutritionally or pharmacologically. Uh, the infectious disease research in the lab is centered today under modeling immunity to enteric pathogens, and the major focus is studying Helicobacter pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori is a stomach, a stomach pathogen. It affects about 50% of the world population, and uh, only in about 10 to 15% of the cases, H. pylori causes trouble, and that trouble can be very severe. Uh, that severity ranges from lymphoma to gastric cancer. And so when it causes damage, it results in life-threatening disease. But in the majority of the population, H. pylori causes no problem at all. And it is not understood uh, what are the mechanisms that uh, regulate this balance between um, H. pylori as a pathogen versus H. pylori as, as a commensal or possibly beneficial organism since H. pylori infection is indirectly related to inflammatory bowel disease, the disease that I alluded at earlier, uh, asthma, and uh, in some cases, obesity and type 2 diabetes. So we have an organism, when we are colonized with this organism, we may have protection against chronic disease, but if we are unlucky and our immune system turns the bad way, then we may develop cancer. So it's, it's a matter of probabilities, and we want to understand the mechanisms that shape this response towards cancer, versus uh, regulation and anti-inflammation and therefore benefit in immune-mediated diseases to develop better therapies. And that has been uh, the, the core effort uh, of MIP through computational modeling and experimentation and will continue to be the effort over the next few years. This is uh, a slide alludes to some of the older research that uh, was conducted in uh, about 2007. So I guess that was pre-VBI uh, research, but it's still very relevant because uh, this pipeline of, of products uh, continues to be developed. And it, it relates to one of the naturally occurring compounds that we identified to have um, very potent insulin sensitizing sensitizing activities. In other words, it exerts potent anti-diabetic effects. The, the compound is called abscisic acid, 
and uh, is found in plants. But it turns out the amounts of abscisic acid found in plants are not sufficient to exert anti-inflammatory or anti-diabetic effects. However, if we provide higher doses in a highly controlled setting in, in mice with diabetes and obesity, we see remarkable efficacy that is similar to some of the top selling medications currently in the market. That's a comparison between abscisic acid and Abandia in a mouse model of type 2 diabetes. Computational modeling is a central piece of uh, effort under uh, nutritional immunology. We build uh, multi-scale modeling platforms and uh, with support of NDSSL and others, we have uh, been able to develop uh, high-performance computing-driven uh, computational and mathematical models. And uh, we define those models to be predictive and validated by experimental data. This is a paradigm that uh, represents the integration of our computational modeling efforts and experimentation. On the horizontal axis, we have models, tools, and technologies. On the vertical axis, we have data, metadata, information, and knowledge. And what this figure represents is that you truly need both working uh, in parallel in order to be able to not only research the past, but also absorb the present and reflect on the future. And I would add, based on the track record of MIP, predict the future as it relates to mechanistic understanding of infectious and immune-mediated diseases. So um, we, we developed these uh, predictive, validated computational models, and we are hoping to apply the technology that has been highly successful under modeling immunity to enteric pathogens to accelerate drug development, basically accelerate uh, the path to cures in a chronic disease or an immune-mediated uh, disease uh, setting. This is uh, a slide this, this taken from our website, represents something that I believe is quite unique in NIMAL, and that is the profound integration of experimental and computational aspects. We are not only doing modeling, we are not only doing experimentation, but we uh, combine modeling experimentation to better understand human health and develop uh, cures for uh, widespread and devastating human diseases. And you can access our website if you are interested at uh, www.nimal.org. So uh, I want to put uh, more emphasis on the question and answer session. And, and there are some questions that uh, we want to uh, favor over the next few minutes. So I would want to ask Vida, Raquel, and Stefan to join me in the panel. I'll be moving the slides.